Welcome students. Today we will solve eighth problem on dresses, and we will solve this problem through method of sections. So let us start today's lecture. We are given one truss over here, and we are asked to find forces in members DB, DE, and GE of this truss by method of sections. We know if we have to solve any problem. Through method of sections, then first step is that we should identify the supports given in the truss. In this truss, we are given two supports: pin support at joint F and roller support at joint G. We know pin support provides two reactions: one normal to its surface, and other is along its surface. and roller support provides only one reaction that is normal to its surface so let us label these reactions so let us start with the pin joint first so we have labeled normal reaction at pin joint and we have assumed its direction in our direction and let us label it as r f y reaction at f in y direction now let us label the second reaction at pin joint and that we have to label along the surface and we have considered its direction towards right and we have labeled it as reaction at f in x direction now let us show the reaction at roller support and we know roller support provides only one reaction that is normal to its surface and we have considered the direction of that reaction in our direction and we have labeled it as reaction at g in y direction so the first step under method of sections is that identify the supports given in the truss and label the reactions provided by those supports and in the second step we have to find the values of these reactions through equations of equilibrium that means now we will apply three equations of equilibrium summation fx is equal to 0 summation fy equal to 0 and summation m equal to 0 so let us start with the first equation that is summation fx is equal to 0 so let us see how many forces are acting in this truss along x direction so there are three forces of 135 kN each acting at joint a b and d in x direction and these three are acting towards right so we have to consider these three positive apart from these three external forces we have one reaction also acting in x direction and name of that reaction is rfx it is also acting towards right so we have to consider this also positive it means final equation will be rfx plus 135 plus 135 plus 135 equal to 0 so from here we will get the first value that is rfx equal to minus 405 kN and we have obtained its value negative that means the direction which we considered for rfx at the start that is not correct actually it is acting towards left now let us apply the second equation of equilibrium that is summation fy equal to 0 now let us see how many forces are acting in this truss in y direction so there are two forces rfy and rgy both are acting in our direction so we have to consider these two positive it means equation will be rfy plus rgy equal to 0 in this equation we have two unknowns and we cannot solve this equation so let us call this equation as equation number 1 for time being Now let us apply the third equation of equilibrium that is summation m equal to 0 let us take the moment about joint f now if we will take moment about joint f then moment because of these two forces rfx and rfy will be equal to 0 because these two are intersecting moment center and we will left with four forces in the truss for which we have to find the moments So let us start with the first force. Let us observe its moment about joint F. Now this force will generate clockwise moment, and clockwise moments we have to consider negative. 
this is the line of action of this force and this is the moment center so perpendicular distance this distance between moment center and line of action of that force is equal to 7.2 meters it means moment because of this force will be equal to minus 135 into 7.2 let us observe the moment because of the next force acting at joint B. This force will also generate clockwise moment about joint F and we have to consider that as negative. And this is the line of action of this force and this is the moment center. So perpendicular distance between the line of action and the moment center is 4.8. So the magnitude of the moment because of this force about joint F will be equal to 135 into 4.8 and we have to consider this as negative because it is a clockwise moment. Now next force is acting at joint D. This will also generate clockwise moment and we have to consider that moment negative and its magnitude will be 135 into 2.4. Now let us observe the moment because of the last force that is RGY about joint F. RGY will generate anti-clockwise moment, so we have to consider that positive. And the perpendicular distance between RGY and moment center F is 4.5. So moment because of RGY will be RGY into 4.5. It means equation will be minus 35 into 2.4 minus 135 into 4.8 minus 135 into 7.2 plus RGY into 4.5 equal to 0. So from here we will get the value of RGY and its value is positive. That means whatever direction we have considered for RGY at the start, that direction is correct. So it is acting in our direction. Once we get value of RGY, then we can find value of RFY. So for that we have to put the value of RGY in equation 1. So from equation 1 we will get value of RFY that is equal to minus 432 kN and we got negative sign for RFY. That means the direction which we assumed for RFY at the start is not correct. Actually it is acting in downward direction. So we have found the values of these three reactions acting at these two supports. This was the second step. Now in the next step, we have to find the forces in these three members of the truss. So let us first label the values of the calculated reactions. So reaction at G is acting in our direction and its magnitude is 432. And at pin joint, one reaction is acting in downward direction, its magnitude is 432. And other reaction is acting towards left and its magnitude is 405. Now we have to find forces in these three members of the truss. So let us see where are these three members in this truss. So we have to find force in member DB, DE and GE. And we know under method of sections in the third step we have to cut the truss from a particular section in such a way that that section should cut at the most three members of the truss and those cut members must include the members of the truss for which we have to find the force. Now you can see in this case we have to find forces in these three members of the truss. That means we have to cut this particular truss along this section. So if we will do this then we will satisfy both the conditions. Means this section will cut at the most three members of the truss and those three members will include the members of the truss for which we have to find the forces. So we have divided this truss into two sections. Let us say this is lower section and this is upper section of the truss. Now we can choose any of these two sections for the next step. So let us pick the lower section of this truss. And in the next step we have to draw the free body of that section. So let us draw the free body of lower section in the next step. So we are considering equilibrium of lower section of the truss. So in order to draw the free body of lower section of the truss, we have to draw these three members, 
we have to show these three reactions then we have to show this external force acting at joint D then we have to show these three cut members so we have shown the three members then we have shown external force and we have labeled the reactions at joint F and at joint G then we have drawn the cut members also now in the next step we have to label the forces in the cut members of this free body and we have to label forces away from the joint means we have to consider forces tensile in nature so this is member db so in this member we have labeled its force fdb away from the joint means tensile force now next is member de and in this member we have labeled its force fde away from the joint that is tensile nature now the third member is ge so in this member we have labeled its force fge away from the joint that is tensile force now after this we will see is there any inclined force in this particular free body no there is no inclined force in this free body and remember when we draw the free body of the section of the truss then we don't consider the forces in the members which are not cut by the section now after this we will apply equations of equilibrium so let us apply the first equation that is summation fx is equal to 0 now let us see how many forces are acting in x direction in this free body so there are three forces 135 kilonewton FDE and 405 these two forces are acting towards right so we have to consider these two positive and this force is acting towards left so we have to consider this as negative it means equation will be minus 405 plus 135 plus FDE equal to 0 so from here we will get value of FDE as 270 kilonewtons and we got positive value for FDE that means the direction which we assumed at the start is correct so FDE is our tensile force now after that we will apply the second equation second equation is summation Fy equal to 0 now let us see how many forces are acting in this free body in y direction so there are four forces 432 acting at joint F 432 acting at joint G FGE and FDB these three forces are acting in our direction so we have to consider these three positive while this force is acting in downward direction so we have to consider this as negative it means final equation will be 432 minus 432 plus FGE plus FDB equal to 0 and from here we will get FGE is equal to minus FDB now let us apply the third equation of equilibrium that is summation m is equal to 0 now over here we have to observe a very important point that at which joint of this free body we should apply the moments equation so that we should get the values of other unknown forces now in this question we are asked to find fdb fde and fge so far we have found fde and we have to find the values of these two unknowns now if we will take moment about joint D then moment because of these two forces will be zero because these two forces are intersecting joint D it means that equation will have only one unknown and we can find that unknown easily so let us consider moment at joint D so it means at joint D we have to consider moment because of three forces 405 432 and FGE because other four forces are intersecting the moment center so let us first observe moment because of this force about joint D now this will generate clockwise moment so we have to consider it as negative and its magnitude will be 405 into 2.4 this distance is given to us as 2.4 now let us observe moment because of 432 it will generate anti-clockwise moment so we have to consider that as positive and its magnitude will be 432 into this distance which is 4.5 then we have to find 
movement because of FGE. FGE will also generate anti-clockwise movement and we have to consider that as positive and its magnitude will be FGE into 4.5. It means equation will be 432 into 4.5 plus FGE into 4.5 minus 405 into 2.4 equal to 0. So from here we will get value of FGE as minus 216 kilonewtons. We got negative sign for GE. That means whatever direction we considered at the start, that is not correct. So actually it is a compressive force. So next to its magnitude we have labeled letter C. C stands for compressive force. Now we got the value of FGE. That means FDB is equal to positive 216 kilonewton and FDB will be a tensile force. So we have found these three forces through equations of equilibrium. So I hope this particular answer is clear to you. Thank you very much.